Welcome, everyone, to Coffee with the Codex. My name is Dot Porter. I am a curator in the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies, uh, which is a research and development institute um, that is in the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts in the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. And I, uh, once a week, so we do lots of stuff with manuscripts. We digitize them. We have lots of digital projects and other projects. Uh, but we also have some really I think fantastic physical collections. And once a week, I come on to Zoom and I share some of our collections with you. And so that's what we're doing today. Um, today, we are looking at this little manuscript right here. The shelf mark is LJS uh, 51. And the link, uh, I put the link in the chat and Amy will be dropping the link in again. There it is. Uh, my colleague Amy Hutchins is here. Amy is our uh, manuscripts cataloging librarian. She is very knowledgeable about uh, the manuscripts in our collections. So she is in the chat. I will also keep my eye on the chat. This is, uh, if you have not been here before, you're most welcome. Um, this is a pretty informal uh, uh, event. So if you have questions as we go along, uh, don't hesitate to drop them in the chat and Either Amy and I, or maybe even someone else who's here on the chat will address it. Um, so today's manuscript is LJS 51. If you've been here before, you know that sometimes uh, we look at manuscripts that I know very well, and sometimes we look at manuscripts that I don't know at all. And this is one of the second one. Um, but I'm going to do what I can. It's such a neat manuscript. I'm hoping that even if we kind of look through it, um, and it looks neat, maybe that will be enough. I also, I'm not gonna name any names, but I see people in the chat who might actually know a lot more uh, about this. So if you know more about this book, you can share it To Please don't be shy. Um, so the first thing we're gonna look at, so this is a book, it's in Arabic. Uh, we think it was written in Syria, and we think it was written in, what did it say, 15th century? Um, 15th century, uh, but we're not sure because it's not, it's not been date, it's not dated. That is, there's not a date, uh, there's no colophon. Sometimes scribes uh, will write a little note to give their name and they will say when and where they're writing it, and there's not that here. So we have to um, sort of look at the script and the kinds of things that they're writing and the names of people that they're mentioning and that might help us uh, date it. I haven't opened it yet. The reason I haven't opened it yet is because I think the binding is kind of interesting. Um, it is a modern binding, um, modern, I don't know. I looked at the, I was curious, I looked at the provenance, which is sort of the history of the manuscript after um, it was written. And in, in the record, the earliest provenance note that we have is that it was sold at auction at Christie's in 1996. So clearly this book was a, a lot of places before 1996, but that's the earliest uh, note that we have. And it was pretty immediately purchased by uh, Lawrence Schoenberg, who in turn um, gave it to Penn. So that's how we got it. LJS, the shelf mark, LJS 51, that's Lawrence J. Schoenberg. So it's from his collection. Um, so before that, there was an owner who had it rebound uh, re the rebinding of books is very, very common. Um, not a whole lot of manuscripts survive to today actually in their original bindings. So that's not unusual. What is sort of interesting about this binding is that this looks like a medieval European binding. It has wooden boards, it has leather along the spine. Um, I think this would be called a quarter or half binding because it's sort of the leather covers the spine and part of the um, of the boards but leaves a lot of the boards uncovered. Um, so this is not the binding, the kind of binding that this book would have had originally. Um, uh, the, the kind of bindings that you see on uh, books from the Middle East, they're usually, um, they're often leather 
sort of covered over not wooden boards but like ca uh, card cardboard almost or like sheets of paper that are pressed together to make a kind of board fully covered there would be often a lot of decoration um, you often see uh, I'm blanking on the term for it but some kind of almost oval maybe decoration in the middle and stuff around the sides and you you would there would be a flap that comes over so it uh, you would have a flap that would come on and would come in and then you close the book and it's like a little box in there so this was owned by some European person who probably had other books that were rebound in this kind of style so this is very weird uh, to my mind. So I want to be sure to mention that. Okay, but we want to look at the inside. So LJS 51 is a collection of correspondence that is encrypted. And the record says that there are over 150 different alphabets uh, that are used um, in this uh, manuscript. So my understanding is that the whoever it was who made, probably made this book, um, had several people that he was corresponding with, and they had different alphabets. Some of the people who are named in the record, uh, if you want to look at them, are known to be people who invented these uh, kinds of alphabets. And so they would write back and forth, letters back and forth. and. So what I think we're seeing is we're going to see a letter, well, here's, here's one clearly, a letter written in a strange alphabet that is not Arabic, and then that letter being um, then translated or transliterated into the Arabic um, uh, alphabet. So you're, you're going to see a lot of Arabic, and you're also going to see these um, invented uh, alphabets. You'll see that there's red um, here, these red letters. This is showing the Arabic letter above the sort of invented uh, letter. And I'll say a little bit more about, about some of the alphabets, but I think you want to see them. So I'm going to page through and sort of point out um, the sections where these uh, different alphabets are. Uh, are. Here we go. It's written on uh, paper, and as you probably saw when I opened it up, the first, I think there's pages missing at the start. The opening is a little bit um, falling apart, but it is, once you get inside, this is pretty high quality paper, um, so it's not, uh, not too bad. So here's another um, section with the encrypted alphabet, and then um, Here's the translation, and then we're going back into here. And unfortunately, I don't, um, I don't read Arabic, so I can't tell you what the letters are. But some of the, um, what I wrote, read in both in the catalog record and mostly in the little archive that we have um, with some other descriptions of it, it looks like the letters, there's some uh, medical so they're talking about science um, and also politics and religion. So they were covering some different bases in um, what they were writing. And when I say it's correspondence, clearly these are not the original letters. These aren't letters that have been bound together. This is copying um, sort of a, a book where you imagine he's written a letter out and he gets a letter back, and then he comes to his book and um, co copies them out into the book. And I think this was a practice that was, I've certainly heard of this being done um, by people in Europe. I believe Charles Darwin, for example, had books where he was copying his letters. Um, and so that's what, uh, that's what is happening here. And if anyone knows anything more about this, this practice of encryption or um, this, this text in particular, I would love to 
uh, hear from you because it's for me it's a little bit it's a little bit mysterious. Um, let's see. I'm gonna zoom. Let me see. I'm gonna see. I've got a different setup today. So do I have my? I don't. Can you all see this okay, or would you like me to zoom in a little bit? What do you think? Amy's sort of nodding her head. Okay. I will, I'm going to zoom in uh, here. Ooh, oh, come on. Right. I also have a light today. Um, so hopefully you can see the, there's not a lot of color, but hopefully, ah, there we go. You can probably see this a little bit better. Um, there we are. So one thing that I learned, again, while I was reading through the description, um, is that this kind of uh, crypto alphabet where you are, you basically invent a whole new alphabet to replace um, with like a letter for letter replacement was, and I hadn't realized this, but it makes sense, um, wasn't actually common in the Latin West. And, and I think this is true. So I think about the, um, we have some other uh, cryptographic uh, manuscripts in our collection that are in Latin. And most of them, if not all of them, what you're doing is you're replacing one Latin letter with another one. So instead of A, um, you, you replace it with C. And you sort of have some method for knowing which letter you replace, and then you replace the letters and you do it. Um, because of the way the Arabic alphabet um, works, um, the letters connect to each other in sort of specific ways. Um, it makes that kind of replacement difficult. So you tend to see these kinds of complete replacement alphabets in um, Arabic languages that are written in the Arabic alphabet when you don't see it in Latin. And I thought, oh, that's such an interesting, that's a, it's just, it just never occurred to me that, that, would, that the way that the, that the alphabet is written would make that much of a difference, but clearly it, uh, it does, which is pretty neat. Let's see, Matilde says, that other script is perplexing. It kind of reminds me of the zodiac symbols. I think we're looking at this one. It is, there are, some of these are very strange uh, alphabets. Um, in, the, in the material, again, that I was reading, um, some of the letters are similar um, to Arabic. So I think um, if you are familiar with Arabic, some of some of the alphabets you'll look and you'll say, "Oh, that's you." Ca I can see where the person who made that was sort of thinking about um, Arabic, the Arabic alphabet, while they did it. Um, others are similar in some ways to um, Hebrew, also, and uh, Aramaic. Uh, they were saying that, that if you're familiar with Aramaic, some of them um, are sort of uh, inspired maybe uh, by that. And I think some of them, somewhere in here, there is what they call the tree alphabet. And I didn't look ahead of time to see where the tree alphabet uh, is in here. So I'm, I'm hoping we can get to it. Um, it looks like this one has lots of little circles with things and then little this almost looks like a little person oh Shreve many of the letters are numbers oh thank you so Shreve Simpson for those of you who don't know uh, is a, an expert in uh, Arabic and Persian manuscripts and so I was hoping you might uh, contribute so numbers so do you mean that they're using numbers to replace numbers in the alphabets to replace uh, letters of like in place of letters like I was going to say I'm going to say two instead of a which I think is another thing that you see in Latin and English um, cryptography 
it's sort of interesting. Okay, here's a different, this is now is another different one. It's fun to be able to sort of see, see how they're doing. It's like this X, I keep seeing this X with the little circles. Um, this one, I don't know if you guys know the Voynich manuscript, that's like a little Voynich. I am absolutely not saying, by the way, that this manuscript has anything to do with the Voynich manuscript. Um, I don't know if there's just limited things. Yes, Steve, that's what it looks like. And uh, Arabic letters have a numerical value. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. I'm constantly learning. Let's see. I do want to find the tree, the tree alphabet. I feel like if I see it, I will know it. I feel like I'm seeing the same kind of um, characters sort of being reused. And so this, this is one I haven't seen before. So this is different, but then this little guy that looks like a little flower, like that's another one. And I'm wondering how much of this is being, you know, is Alphabet sort of reusing each other's characters or what exactly? I don't know very much about cryptography, but it's very cool. Uh, Matilda says no pictures in this one. So there's no pictures, but the, the alphabets are sort of like little pictures. Um, here. Ooh. Okay, and here again is um, these little red, uh, the red markings, uh, I have been told, are the Arabic, um, somebody pro came through probably later, so this is probably not, um, not the original scribe. Um, somebody is coming through and sort of uh, saying which of these little characters is which Arabic um, character. So that's sort of fun to see that. Oh, Matilde, I meant compared to the Voynich. Yes, the Voynich has a lot of really interesting pictures uh, in it. Actually, I would love to do coffee with a codex with the Voynich someday. That's like my dream. I don't think they'll ever let me in, but a woman can dream. Let's see. Some of them are more square. And here's these little, these little flowery things again. I feel like the same, I don't know, and again, I don't know if it's the same alphabet or if it's different alphabets that are sort of reusing um, letter forms between them. It feels a little bit like looking at Russian and Ukrainian, which both use the same alphabet and yet have some differences. Let's see. Eugene, these alphabets should be compared to that of pseudo Washia books on cryptography. Yeah, I'm, I am, I, I think that this book is an original text. There's nothing in any of the, any of the descriptions that we have to say that this is a copy from someone else. It seems like this is original. And I think it would be really interesting to compare this to other, um, to other cryptography books, because I think clearly um, he, you know, the author, the scribe, or, or I don't know if it's the original scribe, but the, the person who compiled this book originally um, didn't invent these alphabets. He's um, corresponding with some of the people who are known to have. Um, I, it would be great to get somebody looking at uh, at, at this, let's see, Eugene. It's an example of recreational recreational cryptography, according to me. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's definitely like it seems like something he's doing for fun. It's not like they're war. It's wartime, and they're trying to, um, you know, keep people from reading it. I think it's sort of uh, fun. Shreve says it looks like there are many repeated uh, symbols. Yeah, the the little. I don't see it now. The little flower is one example. But oh, you know, here, 
here again, I think there's a lot of sort of mixing up. Linda says, I'm unclear on the alternating scripts with Arabic. Is the Arabic translation or are there replies? So according to um, the record that I have, the Arabic is translations. So we have the, and, the, and it is correspondence. So they're writing back and forth to each other. And so this section um, would be the, the, you know, the note in code and then what comes next is going to be the, um, the Arabic translation. So that's why it's going back and forth. Um, yes. Oh, Eugenie is telling, telling us a lot. Let's see. It was popular in the ninth century and 10th in the Arabic world. I think the, that is the cr cryptography popular in the ninth and 10th century. Um, uh, LJS uh, 51 contains uh, some verses that is poetry. Okay, so there's poetry in addition to um, the political and religious and what was the other thing I said? Um, medical, I think. It seems like they were sort of just chatting about whatever. I'm trying to imagine, and I kind of feel like I want to now invent alphabets with my friends and write letters back and forth. I think that would be... That would be kind of fun. And I still, I feel like I still haven't seen this um, tree, tree alphabet yet. Oh, hold on. And here's, again, these ones that look like little guys. I think they're very fun. Um, okay, I have an update. Poetry and such correspondence is quite common in Arabic literature. So that, that's good to know. So it wouldn't be unusual to see uh, poetry and correspondence. I feel like this could be a really fun um, project for someone to figure out the um, the code the code parts. Um, we had a a few years ago. We had a student. Oh, here's more of the. It's interesting that that whoever was coming through and doing this sort of translating only. Well, maybe it's not strange. They only did parts of it. They didn't even finish. They only did the first, the first four lines. It feels like that would be a lot of work. So maybe I'm not surprised by that. Yay! I see your direct message, person who direct messaged me. You can email me if you want. That would be. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, let's see. Oh no, there's more. Here they're doing more of this. Oh, I was talking about we had a student. Uh, graduate student at actually she was post back at Penn in the classics department and she did a little electronic edition of LJS 255 225 um, which is another crypt it's a Latin cryptography manuscript that we have and she was able to um, encode it so that when you switched views it showed you the translation um, and the, trans the transcription in code and then um, out of code. That was pretty, that was pretty neat. Oh, this, it looks like it says mom. I don't think it says mom, but it's, this is one of the fun things about looking at these invented alphabets is that you end up seeing things that look like uh, letters to you. So Moeto, that doesn't say Moeto. It's like people who use Russian or Cyrillic, Cyrillic letters and try to use them to replace English letters and movie titles and stuff, and it never makes sense. It's kind of like that. Yes, thank you, Amy, the LJS 225. Okay, Kadi has a, has a comment. I see the use of the lines, one lines, uh, two lines, and three lines. At some point, there were Arabs in China. Prophet Muhammad was known to say, go out in search of knowledge. Uh, all the way, oh, using uh, experimentation in this code using Chinese numbers. It would be, I mean, that would be part of the interesting thing of this project is to sort of figure out where the inspiration for these alphabets came from, if they were all, you know, s because some of them are probably completely made up, but it's always a little inspirational to 
to look at other alphabets and see what you can sort of um, pull out of it. I'm waiting for the trees. I'm very excited about it's going to be at the very, very end. Ah, oh, no, there we go. I'm betting you that this is the tree. And you can see why they call it the tree alphabet. Um, and this is really different um, because they're connected at the bottom in this. This is interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm betting that this is like, here's a word, and here's a word. The words are connected. And the letters must be, it must be like how many needles the tree has. It seems like that's a lot of work, but I love it. I'm so glad we found the trees. Um, that's very neat. And of course, someone has very helpfully come through and put, um, put them in. So that's neat. And someone, I think, has also made, and I'd love to know what this says, has made a note maybe on the side uh, here. So maybe they were also impressed with the, with the tree alphabet. That is so cool. And someone else made some kind of note. This is obviously later. Um, this is actually, there's a lot happening here because there's some, actually, I think that might be ink. No, I don't think so. That's something, there's something here. There's something written here. Somebody, you can't really see, but someone's written a little something up here. There is a lot, a lot going on there. And then no more trees. They decided the tree was too much trouble. Uh, so we're not doing any more trees. I don't actually know if they said that. We even have marginal notes written in the code, uh, which is pretty cool. That's, that's pretty neat. Is there more trees? I'm so, I'm so into the trees. How are we doing for time? I still have two minutes, so I'm just gonna keep, keep going. Um, if this is your first time, normally I have, I have more to say about the book. This is, this is completely uh, different to me, but I just, I just think this is very neat. Hmm. Some kind of, it looks like this is someone later trying to imitate one of the alphabets. I can't tell if it's this alphabet up here, but they're sort of trying to make their own note. Oh no, they're, they're copying this line. That's what they're doing. You can see there, they've copied it letter by letter. Not terribly well, but I don't know if I would do terribly well either, so I'm not gonna be too, not, not be too critical of them. Yeah, I'm really curious where they got the 150 alphabets number because a lot of it looks very similar. Um, so I would be curious to know if how many alphabets there are versus, I don't know, different characters being reused. Like the that tree alphabet, it's 12.30. I'm going to... Can we find the tree again? Because that was just so neat. I would love to end on the tree. Where'd you go? I've lost you. Oh, maybe not. Well, I'll, we'll see the tree later. Because it is 12.30, and I do try to, to end on time. Thank you all so much uh, for taking a look through this very strange manuscript with me. Um, it is digitized and online. Uh, if you want to work on it, please uh, email me. And come next week, we'll look at some astronomy manuscripts. And in two weeks, we'll look at some royal uh, fortifications. And uh, until then, take care, everyone. Have a great week. And I hope I will see you again soon.